I'm Major Jeremiah Weaver. I'm the Chief of Staff of the Department of the Air Force's Chief Architect Office. So AD 5.2 is the second in a series of architecture demonstration and evaluation events conducted by the Department of the Air Force's Chief Architect's Office. Uh, it's designed to demonstrate and evaluate various technologies um, and various capabilities that fit into the um, underlying architecture behind Air Force missions and uh, systems. So ADE 5.2 is the chief architect's look at PACAF's implementation um, of agile combat employment. Uh, by looking at an operational implementation of agile combat employment, that enables the chief architect to define and really refine the baseline architecture of how agile combat employment works. Um, the baseline architecture includes all of the things that make agile combat employment um, a reality. So there's uh, technologies, there's people, there's systems, there's operational concepts, and all of those uh, are designed to fit together to create an operational whole. So various parts of that whole include runway repair, maintenance operations, munitions movements, uh, training, of operation, training of operational personnel. Um, if we can really get a good solid definition of each of those systems, each of those personnel systems, um, and how they are supposed to fit together to make agile combat employment work, then we can have an established baseline that we can deliver to industry, to senior Air Force leaders, to our creative partners and allies to say this is how holistically everything is supposed to work together. Uh, and that allows our creative partners to develop solutions, whether that's technology or new operational uh, solutions, um, that allow Air Force programs to work together as, an, as a holistic, um, integrated whole to achieve capabilities rather than focusing on one particular platform's capability or one particular um, system's contribution, you're able to look at how everything works together um, and maximize operational capability in that way. Pacific Iron 21, I see as part of a broader acknowledgement by the Air Force and Space Force um, that competitors, our adversaries, um, have really started to credibly threaten the Air Force's traditional dominance uh, in military operations. We're, uh, it's easy to make the mistake of taking for granted air and space superiority. It's easy to uh, forget that without air dominance, without the ability to control the air and provide operations from the air, the joint force loses if we can't, if we can't defend our own domain uh, from adversary. We as a department absolutely have to seize opportunities like Pacific Iron 21 uh, to assess and evaluate how all of the uh, components that go into our mission systems can work together as an integrated whole and work into a system of system architectures so that we can stay not just one step ahead of our adversaries, but really uh, increase the pace uh, at which we are able to make our decisions, to increase our decision superiority, uh, to stay ahead of them, uh, not just now, but also into the future by ensuring that we have a really solid underlying definition of what exactly it is that we're trying to get after holistically so that industry and our creative partners can develop um, software or techniques or procedures uh, that help the joint force as a whole uh, achieve its mission. So really we want to walk away from ADE-5 and from Pack Iron 21 with a solid, well-defined, refined uh, architecture of how the pieces and systems that work as a whole, that work together for agile combat employment, uh, can be standardized across the entire Department of the Air Force. So across the Air Force and the Space Force, how do we take the capabilities that we have, 
um, and how can we best integrate those into a whole system of systems architecture that accelerates the pace of our change and enables us in the future to um, continue providing technologies to stay ahead of the OODA loop of the adversaries. So ABMS um, is part of a broader concept of joint all domain command and control uh, as part of the joint warfighting concept uh, that, that enables us to act with decision superiority, to enable us to respond um, with speed to adversary um, actions, adversary maneuvers, uh, but also to stay ahead of our adversary and surprise them with our own actions uh, and maneuvers. ABMS recently moved to a uh, a program level effort and simultaneously with that program level effort the chief architect's office is uh, working as part of the broader system of ABMS and other like platforms uh, to move the Department of the Air Force forward so that its programs can be integrated uh, horizontally across the entire department um, as opposed to vertically uh, where traditionally platforms integrated vertically saying that there was a need that the Air Force had and that need can be filled by a certain capability. What we need to get after is a horizontal um, architecture that allows us to integrate all of those all of those systems and platforms and what we really care about is the effects they can achieve by operating as a whole, not the effects that each individual part of that whole uh, can achieve. So if we can walk away from Pacific Iron with a very well-defined idea um, of what it is that we're getting after, then we can take that architecture back to industry, to the commercial sector, and we can leverage that to let the entire creative and innovative uh, commercial base, the entire creative base in the United States and within our allies as well, um, to design and present solutions to the Department of the Air Force that enable us to achieve those effects faster, to attain those capabilities faster, and to stay ahead of the enemy, uh, you know, to increase the gap between us and the enemy to ensure that we do continue to maintain our dominance uh, in the air and in space. So this is important because we, as a department, we don't have time to rely on traditional monolithic acquisition and employment structures that have served us uh, fairly well in the past. We need a way to uh, accelerate that capability to uh, be able to deliver new capabilities and new tactics, new procedures faster than the adversary can respond. Uh, we need the ability to update existing systems, um, existing modes of operating, uh, existing ways of training our airmen uh, so that we can maintain our tactical edge. And the way that we get ahead and the way that we stay ahead is to make sure that we have all of our um, senior leaders, industry, commercial sector, um, Department of Defense, all of our creative partners and allies operating on the same fundamental understanding, uh, the same fundamental architecture of what it is that we're trying to achieve with agile combat employment and other functional mission architectures. Um, the DOD has done a lot of great work. Our creative partners have done a lot of great work. Uh, but what the Department of the Air Force needs is assurance that the system of systems architectures that are in place deliver a capability rather than just a specific platform delivering a capability. And we do that by having a horizontal uh, architecture in place that everybody can work off of to deliver those effects.